The Chroma case was released in January of 2015, in the same update as the one that reduced P250 ammo and buffed the CZ slightly, again following the huge nerf the month before. The case requires a special Chroma case key to open and features six exclusive community created knife finishes. Damascus Steel, Doppler, Marble Fade, Tiger Tooth, Rust Coat and Ultraviolet, which can only be found in the three different Chroma cases. The XM1014 Quicksilver by Algess is one of 12 weapons from the collection and the only one to be currently accepted. It has the Patina finish, which allows for metallic reflections but it limits what can be customised on the gun. But this weapon isn't his only accepted entry, he also made the Sandstorm skins, among others, including this Scar 20 Grotto as well. That's right, Algis has got a total of 9 skins accepted into this game, and this one has a bit of a backstory to it. Much like his Sandstorms, the Grotto achieved similar notoriety within the Polish community after a streamer named Isaac repeatedly opened this design. Indeed, it's become a bit of a tradition for people to spam Algis' profile about this. He closed the discussion down for a while, but then reopened it again as he doesn't mind too much. The M249 system locked by Next Gen Zzz is part of his sci-fi collection and also doubles up as an answer to what's black and white and red all over. It was originally made back in September of 2014, then received an update in December just before it was accepted in January. It uses the custom paint style which gives a lot of freedom with the colours used and was the sixth of the ten skins that Next Gen has currently got accepted into the workshop so far. The MP9 Deadly Poison by Dot Red was one of the first things he made using Illustrator. Before then, he only used it to make banners in school, never for shapes and vector graphics. So what you're seeing here is the result of trial and error. The spider design was an accident which he then built upon, adding black and green scratches to complete the design. He's also very pleased with the description that Valve gave it. It's not the first bite that kills you, it's the 29 that come after. The Glock Catacombs by SA22 was super quick to make, as he had already made the skulls in ZBrush for previous designs. For this weapon, he tweaked and rendered them in different ways, carving his name into one, giving another a Day of the Dead pattern, making two of them rams, one a butterfly and one crying. This design also makes an appearance on his tattoo sleeve. He was contacted by Valve about making another version of the skin for the Chinese market. Since skulls are frowned upon, he changed them to gas masks. The Urban Shock Dual Berettas by Rake and the Rock are still called Urban Storm on the workshop page. They are one of five accepted designs from him, from a total of just 36 workshop items with these being the only dual Beretta design. They're part of the Urban collection, from which the 5.7 and MP7 Urban Hazards have also been accepted so far. These elites are called Urban Storm though, since he felt that it fitted the colours better. The Sword of Serenity by Seri was originally called Fides, and was inspired by the likes of Zafk and Oni Lols, whose work Seri considers to be very artistic. Seri doesn't like futuristic designs and prefers to work on hand-drawn pictures, and so far has gotten two shotguns accepted the other being the XM1014 Tranquility. There are some very low resolution images that show the making of this design, though like I said, they're very low res. Watching 4K for the best results. The MAC-10 Malachite by Nanu has a tiled random pattern, part of a collection of 13 skins of numerous colours, but all of which typically contain black to add to the contrast. Other skins in the collection are named after fish and camouflage, but this one is named after the crystal Malachite, probably because it uses the same colours, and depending on how it's cut, the same pattern. I spoke extensively to Gaunt, who made the Desert Eagle Naga. He didn't have much to say about individual skins, but took great pride in the technical aspect of how they were made. He found engraved designs a challenge, as he was only able to change the colour map and fettling with the specular exponents. This means that as the lighting changes direction, then it can reveal that it's just a flat surface. The Steagle was done using the Patina style, which has a nice metallic finish, but limits what you can do with it. Although he now favours the newer Gunsmith style, Gaunt also said that limitations with the styles can help you because you have to plan around them and to demonstrate a real understanding of the process to achieve good results. The P250 Muertos by Olaf Mister, no not that one, was originally called the Mandala, part of a series that is based around circular patterns. His first workshop entry was a blue 5.7 of a similar design, and for a second he made this, adding a red skull to the centre of the pattern. This was first made for a media studies project in school, but was then applied to the gun after a friend of his suggested it. For the upcoming Chinese release of CSGO, he had to create a low violence version of the skin, where he replaced the skull in the original with the luchador design that's currently on screen. This was just the second workshop submission of his, though he now has a total of 19. Oh, and Olaf Mister is a joke of his. He's actually known as Mario's. The AK-47 cartel is found in Onda's workshop page. Yup, that Onda's, from Room on Fire. But the skin itself was actually made by Coyote37 and Hanzo, who have achieved success elsewhere on the workshop as well. The cartels are designed to be full of details but also simple at the same time. 
They joked about it being the brown laminate, since that's what the low resolution models of these looked like. They just wished that the gunsmith finish had been around at the time, which would have given them more freedom with how it was created. Apparently, there is a hidden message on each cartel weapon from the collection, even those not yet included in the game, and not all of them have been found just yet. The M4A4 Dragon King by Legrand was originally named Ancestral. It was inspired by Japanese art from the mid-1800s. She originally designed the pattern for the SSG-08, but didn't like how it was applied to the weapon, at which point she looked around for other designs to apply it to, with the M4A4 being the best fit. She even provided me with some behind-the-scenes artwork which detailed the work that went into the original dragon design. She said she experimented with numerous different designs before settling on the dragon that we all know it for today. The Galil Chatterbox by Ego Death is well known for looking like it has a moving mouth when it's fired. It was originally meant to be a crying baby, but he couldn't get it to look right, so made it into a skull instead. There's also another easter egg. On the right hand side of the gun it says, Feed Me. You can make it out if you look very carefully during the inspect animation. He likes to embrace the wear system, and has indeed designed both this and the Negev design to look better with a bit of wear to them, making this one only available in battle scarred, well worn and field tested the last of which is intentionally made to be rare. And lastly is the Orp Man of War by Arbitron. This weapon series was inspired by the over-embellished designs of antique firearms and cannons, but he also wanted to give them a slightly exotic twist. The design has developed with every skin he has worked on. His earliest proper design for the series was the Negev, but adjusted the wear for later ones. With this Orp, he tried adding gold highlights to make it appear as though the edges were raised above the surface. He uses the anodized, multicolored finish for all of these designs, and finds that tweaking the gloss and wear masks yields better results than the normal map. So far, he is most proud of the AK from this collection.